Uh, okay, hi everybody. Uh, the volume okay? I'll introduce. Hello everyone, thank you for coming today uh, to this talk. We have Chase Kelly. Uh, Chase has a background in aerospace engineering and currently works on flight simulation software. He's primarily used Emacs for all his programming needs and hopes to share how useful and fun it is to program using Emacs. In his free time, he consumes large amounts of uh, science fiction, anime, and manga. So without further ado, let's take it away. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, hey guys, um, so this talk is mostly for people who don't use Emacs, um, either programmers or non-programmers, um, because I wanted to share that uh, Emacs can do everything that you need, whether it's for your uh, development environment or for your text editor. Um, <clears throat> you might say, well, Emacs isn't uh, an IDE um, development environment, but uh, uh, agree to disagree. Um, that's the, the meat of this talk is uh, down here, all these IDE features that you can get uh, using Emacs. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, primarily I'm going to be showing uh, SpaceMax, which is, a, I guess, a set of configuration files for Emacs uh, to sort of simplify setup and, and make things easier to get uh, up and running for you. <clears throat> so, um, a little bit about uh, Emacs and the text, the text editor Holy War, if you've never heard of it. Um, uh, it's VI versus Emacs, uh, traditionally is what people have been using on, uh, on Unix systems, Unix based systems uh, for their text editing. Um, <coughs> uh, basically in VI, uh, you have this uh, modal type of editing uh, where in uh, default, I think you're in command mode um, and you have to exit modes to actually type like you normally would um, in a normal uh, text editor. Uh, whereas in Emacs, you're always in the, the mode where you can just type freely. Um, but there are a bunch of uh, control commands that you can use, hit the control key um, to go, you know, move lines up and down and, and go forward and backwards. Um, it's a good idea to be familiar with both uh, types of commands, uh, the VI set and the Emacs set. Um, uh, VI is on pretty much any sort of uh, GNU Linux server uh, that you'll find out there, uh, so it's always available to you. Sometimes Emacs isn't installed on, on some machines. <coughs> um, usually in a terminal, though, uh, the Emacs type of commands where you do control F for forward, control B for back, uh, you'll have those as that's the default, uh, I think, for bash. Um, <coughs> uh, also, um, right now I'm not using the Emacs style commands. Um, I'm using the Vim style commands. Uh, Emacs can emulate Vim, uh, but Vim can't really emulate Emacs. Um, oops. That, uh, also, they have Snake, uh, if you want to play Snake inside Emacs. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, yeah, one second, let me go back to where I was. What am I doing? <laughs> Escape. There we go. Um, yeah, sorry, let me turn on this. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen uh, screen key, uh, but it'll just show uh, all my key presses. Um, so you see to go up, I hit K. Uh, to go down, I hit J. Uh, L is for left, H is for, oh sorry, H is for left, L is for right. Um, so those are the, the, the infamous H, J, K, L keys for, for VI. So this is a evil mode, is a package for Emacs. Um, if you're using Space Max, uh, you, you use evil mode if you want to use the Vim bindings. You use holy mode if you want to use the Emacs bindings. Uh, the Emacs bindings, you know, it would be control B instead of H, uh, control N for next line instead of J, control P, uh, for the previous line instead of K, uh, et cetera, things like that. <clears throat> uh, so anyway, or you can use the arrow keys. Uh, so here's some common text editors people use. Uh, I don't know why I felt the need to list those out. Uh, some common IDEs, um, oh, and all their licenses as well. Um, and then there's Emacs, uh, which is the uh, original IDE um, combined with a, a Nix-based system. <coughs> um, it stands apart from using Vim combined with the next based system because uh, it integrates really well with uh, whatever system you're running it on, um, with whatever tools that you have installed there. Um, and it's, it's a lot more extensible than uh, Vim is. Uh, you can do a lot, of, a lot of other fun stuff. I was playing Tetris and, and Snake on there earlier, if you saw that. Um, it's, Emacs has been called an operating system that just lacks a decent editor. Um, 
mainly by the VI fanboys. Um, but now it has a good editor because uh, you just use evil mode. Um, so here's a little uh, bit of a joke picture uh, running around. So you can, you can view your images in Emacs as well. Um, it's not just a text editor. So these are the learning curves for different types of text editors. Uh, Notepad, it doesn't take very long to learn. You just get started. Pico, a little bit harder. I've never used Pico. Uh, Visual Studio, you actually, once you get into really using it, you become less productive. Uh, VI, you can't use it at all until you know everything, you know, all the commands. Um, and Emacs, uh, you sort of spiral down infinitely um, <clears throat> into customizing it uh, because there's so much uh, infinite customization available to you. Uh, so, um, I kind of wanted to, uh, this is, I'm running Space Max right now, but I wanted to um, go ahead and go back to vanilla Emacs uh, to just show you guys some basic setup for setting up Emacs and how to install a basic package. Uh, and then I'll switch back to Space Max and talk about that. Uh, hopefully I'll still be good on time. Um, so another cool thing is I can, in my notes here, I can just evaluate um, our, some arbitrary code. So I just moved my Emacs configuration folder to a backup, uh, and now I'm gonna close and restart Emacs. Uh, yes, save that. And hopefully this works. So here's what you'd get if you just installed plain old Emacs. Uh, no, this is good new Emacs. You can see the little, I guess, what do you call it, a unicorn? I don't know. Is that a GNU? Oh yeah, I see it. I see the horns now. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go to my org file here. All right, so here's where we were. Uh, so yeah, I already talked about some of the Emacs key bindings. Uh, forward, back, previous, next. Uh, I'm using the arrow keys now, but you know, control P, control N, um, instead of what you might be used to, uh, control C and control V, you would use uh, Alt W to copy and control Y to paste. Um, you can just type normally in here. You don't have to worry about if you're in the insert mode. Uh, and yeah, do the, do the tutorial uh, to get all the basics. Um, <coughs> oops, it's my computer beeping. So um, the uh, configuration file Oops, trying to use the space max commands. Is it in uh, the uh, dot emacs? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm gonna skip this part because I do not remember um, all of the emacs commands because I've been using space max for the past year. So let's retrieve my uh, .emacs.d folder. And let's run Emacs again. Uh oh. So I need to uh, sorry guys. What did I do wrong? So I somehow deleted my uh, backup. Did you, guys, did you guys see how I did that? What did I do? Yeah, well I did rm.emacs. 
but not .emacs.d.back. Uh, so is this right for move? Huh? This is a move. Yeah, so I moved my dot back back to the regular. All right. Uh, Yeah, I, I, I tried to. Uh, no, it doesn't. I to, uh, yeah, totally screwed us. <laughs> dot emacs dot back. No such file directory. Yeah, well, I, w I, want, I would, but um, I also wanted to show off um, all the IDE features, which required a little bit of setup. Um, yeah, this is a flop. So, wait, I see a dot emacs dot d dot back right there, right? Ah, okay, I see what I did now. First, let's try to turn off this screen key thing. Um, so CD in here, move my dot emacs dot d dot back to, oh, you guys tell me if this is the right command. Hmm. Ah, yeah, I see. And I wanna move that back to my home folder. Okay. And I want to remove dot emax dot d. Move dot emax dot d to a, b, c. Okay. All right. <laughs> We're saved, okay. Did, did I use up all my time? All right, so this is what you get when you start up Space Max uh, instead. And I'll skip the, some stuff and just jump right to the meat of uh, what I wanted to show, which is IDE sort of features. Um, yeah, so to, if you wanted to install Space Max, uh, which I don't wanna do under pressure, uh, if you just Google Space Max and go to the website, you'll see that link. You're basically just cloning the configuration files from GitHub. <clears throat> um, and the gist of Space Max is that you install things in terms of layers rather than in packages. So if you know you're gonna be programming uh, C++ entirely or Python entirely, instead of figuring out what packages are relevant to that, uh, you would just install the C++ layer or the Python layer, and it would give you pretty much anything that you might need. Uh, so we'll look at what uh, some of those things are that you get. I guess I should zoom in some. All right, um, <clears throat> we'll jump back and forth. Um, so uh, another thing about Space Max is the, uh, the key bindings. Uh, you can use the Emacs or uh, the Vim style. I'm, use, I'm using the Vim style. Um, and everything is, uh, most of the commands you can use space, uh, followed by uh, some sort of mnemonic shortcut. So I hit, if I hit space now, um, those are all the options. I guess it's a little cut off. Um, but I want to do open a recent file. So space fr is the mnemonic for file recent. Um, and I was looking at a uh, flight gear um, <coughs> uh, flight simulator, uh, which is a C++ um, flight sim. And it'll take just a second to load. Still probably faster than Eclipse. Um, so yeah, the, the, main, the main point I wanted to give here is that you don't uh, need to use Eclipse or JetBrains products or uh, Visual Studio, God forbid, um, <clears throat> because you can get all those features that are offered there uh, in Emacs, um, and it's easy to set up, especially with Space Max. Um, <clears throat> so let me see, let me split my window. All right, so obviously syntax highlighting, um, you get out of the box with Emacs. Um, you also get uh, syntax checking, 
um, at least with the C++ layer. Um, Flycheck is the package that does that. Uh, so if I type some bogus thing here and forget a semicolon, uh, it should tell me that there was an issue. And sure enough, I can hover over that or something. Parser issue, no semicolon. Um, you get auto-completion. Let's find a good thing to auto-complete. FDM exec. I've, I've never looked at uh, Flight Gear before, so I have no idea what most of this is doing, but, oops. So if we wait just a moment, uh, there's all the options for FDM exec on a little pop-up. You can still see the top of that. Let me move that to the middle of the screen. Uh, so let's enable output. Um, you get snippets as well. Um, oops, do I have a snippet layer? Yeah, so let's say I want to put in a, a snippet for an if statement. Um, th this other thing that's really great is Helm, uh, which is a package that, um, it's not in the vanilla Emacs, um, but if you install uh, Space Max, it'll ask you, do you want to use Helm or um, Another option, which I'm not sure, I, I really recommend Helm. Um, it has all this pop-up with all the help that you need. Uh, so if you're not sure what exactly you're looking for, you don't have to have it memorized. Uh, so it's sort of a compromise between having a GUI where you can go click down the, the drop-down menus. Um, you can just look at all the help here and, and navigate through it. Um, but you don't have to use your mouse, you can stay on the keyboard. Uh, condition, I don't know, true. Hit tab, whatever. Um, <coughs> you can refactor some things. Um, let's say we want to rename this variable. Um, if you don't know the exact name of a command, uh, Helm will help you find it. You can just sort of search for it. So let's see, r tags rename symbol. Uh, save that file, yes. Replace it with ABCD. And it asks me if I want to change all of those. Uh, so it's aware of all the symbols in uh, whatever project you're working on. Uh, so it's not just a, you don't have to resort to a regex, find, replace. Um, it's actually aware of all the syntax. Uh, yeah, I am. Um, let me just do it this way. Yeah, it's asking me some questions to finish things up. And a little bit up here. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, confirm, no, I don't want to rename that. Um, all right, so we get good uh, version, con version control um, integration, uh, like you'd expect with your, your IDE. I don't know if you guys can see that little tiny green plus uh, over here on the side, but that says I've added a new line. Uh, let's delete a line and save it. Uh, and I get a little blue diamond instead, and now I see a little red minus over on the left. Um, that's useful. Um, you can uh, blame people who've had uh, errors in your code. So Jeff McLean made this commit over here, whoever that is. Bertrand Kakanier. Um And a uh, really nice um, version control integration with Git uh, is this in the Git mode. <coughs> um, you can see I've changed these two files. Um, it provides uh, really easy to access shortcuts. Um, so let's, uh, I don't need to press the space key for this, I can just type the shortcuts directly. So S for stage. Let me turn the screen key back on. Um, I think you, no. Oh, where am I? Ah, I didn't see the pop at the bottom. Discard the unstaged changes, yes. X was discard. Uh, S for stage. Anyway, C for commit. That's what I would end up committing. Uh, F for pull, for example. Uh, I don't think there's anything to update. <coughs> uh, project manage it. You get that with the uh, projectile package. Um, so uh, the mnemonic for that is if you hit space P, 
Um, those are all the sort of projectile commands. Um, space uh, P followed by another P. Um, these are all the projects that I've opened recently, so I can quickly switch between projects. Um, here's, a, here's a Python flight simulator that I found, uh, and it's asking me for what file I want to open. PyFlight. So another thing is you don't have to have PyCharm for one thing and Eclipse for your Java development. Um, Emacs supports pretty much any language um, and has all these same ID, most of all the same IDE features for whatever language you're using. Uh, Built-in shell here. Um, so I think to run PyFlight, you can just do Python PyFlight.py. Yeah. Don't know how to control this thing, but it works. Uh, for Python, for example, you could also get um, integrated shell. Um, yeah, like I said, Helm's really useful. You can just sort of guess what the name of the command is that you want. You don't have to have it memorized. And I'll also tell you the shortcut there for future reference. Um, so I have a little uh, uh, integrated shell uh, built into Python, or built into Emacs. Print, uh, let's go back to my notes here. Oops. All right, so uh, space uh, WM for window maximize, space BB to list all my buffers, and there's my uh, org file notes. Uh, what else, debugging? Um, let's see if we can debug uh, PyFlight with just PDB. Run PDB like this, uh, PyFlight.py. Well, yeah, I forgot to check that that part worked. Uh, there's also, let's see if this works. Um, you would use just GDB. Um, yeah, I don't even know how to compile, so you'll just have to take my word on that, that you can you can click on the, the fringe and set a breakpoint. Um, it's a good integration with GDB and PDB. I'm not sure what other debuggers that are out there, but I know it supports other language debuggers. <coughs> Navigation. Uh, space VB, let's go back to my flight gear. And let's jump to FDM exec. Uh, so comma is usually the major mode, sort of a preceding shortcut. G for go to, G again. And I'm able to jump around the code base um, and go back and forth. I think there's, I can go just, just hit control O and that takes me back to where I was. Uh, so it's still easy to navigate around everywhere. Uh, it's one step to compile. Um, let's see if that's true. I can hit space CC for compile um, and compile the default target. And so you see I have a nice little buffer down there uh, with some nice coloring um, as it's working on compiling things for the uh, flight gear flight simulator. Back to my notes. <coughs> uh, Multi-language support, uh, I think I already said, it's sort of intuitive uh, if you use the Helm help. Um, if you want to know what layers there are uh, or get any sort of help, just space H for help. Um, the layers will open up the Helm buffer for uh, all the available layers. And you can look at C, C++, for example. Um, a lot of these, you do have to still install some extra software. Um, for example, I was using RTAGs um, for the C++ stuff. Um, so that's why I said in the beginning that uh, when combined with a Unix-based system uh, is where it really shines um, because it's sort of easy to just get that stuff installed. So I just install our tags, um, select this layer. Uh, so yeah, that's how you see the layer space HL. Um, if you want to see your config file in space max, FED for file emacs uh, dot file, uh, TL for toggle lines, and uh, JI for jump, I menu, I guess is what it's called. Uh, and you could go to layers. So under your dot space, your, yeah, your dot space max layers. Um, there's everything I have installed. So a lot of stuff just to try it out. Not that I 
I don't program in Perl at all. I just wanted to see how the Perl layer worked. Um, yeah, the navigation, I wanted to show. Uh, um, so usually in Emacs, I mean, in, in Eclipse something, you'd have a little navigation window on the left like this. Um, so you don't have to give that up either. Aircraft, flight history. There you go. All right, um, so I think those are all IDE features. Um, you, you basically can do everything that you could do in Eclipse or, or uh, some sort of JetBrains product. Um, there's a lot of other cool stuff that uh, Emacs can do. Um, so let's say I wanna uh, type some Japanese here. Um, control slash puts, lets me toggle my input method uh, and I can say, type it in the uh, sort of English, uh, kana, uh, ko, what was I, what was I typing? Konnichiwa. That wasn't right. It's Konnichiwa. Ha, oops. Hajime mashite. Something like that. Um, <clears throat> oh, I gotta go back to English mode before I can use my normal commands. Uh, org mode is what I'm in right now. Um, that's the reason that I found Emacs. Uh, Emacs is the reason I sort of started learning about free software. Um, when I started programming, I've only been programming for about three or four years, uh, using Emacs for three years, and Space Emacs for about a year. Um, but I got into Emacs because um, I wanted to like organize my notes at work and stuff, so I saw somewhere, hey, use org mode in Emacs. Um, another cool thing is uh, you can, in org mode, is you can use literate programming. Um, so you can just like type in an arbitrary language, like SH, uh, and it'll execute. If you do control CC, hit Y for yes, um, and that's my current directory. Um, there's some ELISP you can do. Um, let's do another one. Oops. Cancel, cancel. Uh, Python. Oops. Print. Hello. And execute. Yes. And it, it, it doesn't show uh, the standard out. It'll if I just say x equals five, will it show? Anyway, there's there's an option you have to put in to, to show the result of print or C out or whatever. Um, you can put some C++ in that little window there, um, and it'll wrap it in a trivial main function, so you, if you're taking notes and you wanna share something later with your coworkers, um, you can just put in some random, random code and, and it'll execute if they wanna run it or view your notes, or you can just include the results with your notes. Um, the inline latex support is really cool. Um, if I do frac one, two, and close it there, and I hit control X, let me see if I remember this right. No, it's not, I can't see because of the screencast. What is it doing? I think I've just layered the screencast. Control X C L. Active processes exist. No. Yeah, I have two screencasts running now. I think when I toggle one off. And we'll see if I can just find the command rather than the shortcut. There we go. Created images. It's really small, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, one half. Uh, it was control XCL, I think, instead of CXL. Um, spell check, I have spell check on right now. It thinks ERC is misspelled. Uh, ERC is the uh, uh, Emacs built-in IRC client. So if I just type in the ERC command, um, connect a free node, Port, username, no password. There you go. It's a pretty fully featured uh, IRC client, so you don't even have to leave Emacs for that. Uh, web browsing, uh, EWW, and enter URL keywords. 
Now let's go to duck, duckgo.com. There we go. Um, so you only even have to leave it to uh, browse the web. Um, I thought this was really cool. Space uh, S for search, W for web, uh, and W for Wikipedia. And let's search for stall. So do I want uh, fluid dynamic stall, engine stall? Do I want stall man? Tricked you. I wanted the stall man with two ends. And it, uh, so it gives you all the suggestions in the little Helm buffer. Um, <clears throat> and then it'll pull up a Wikipedia in your web browser. Um, Avi um, is a cool thing. I don't, haven't used very much of it. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I think space uh, X for text, L for line. I uh, don't I think that's a shortcut I had. So let's just do the name command, Avi uh, copy line. So you can assign that to a shortcut, but um, basically wherever your, your cursor is, um, you can just type the letter there on the left and it'll copy whatever is at that letter. Um, so let's copy uh, G. So there you go. Um, you can quickly uh, name things with shortcuts um, and use them. I think I already showed there was a little built-in shell. Um, there's a E shell as well, space ASE, um, which is written entirely in Emacs Lisp. Um, so you don't, if you want to run it on Windows, for example, um, you can get almost a, a full sort of GNU Linux shell working for you. Um, it is really awesome to uh, uh, search for things in your project uh, in Emacs. Um, let me go back to JSB sim and space S for search, uh, A for uh, AG, which is silver searcher uh, instead of grep, and P for project. So this is going to search every file that is in the git project. Um, I don't know. Let's search for... See if it mentions Boeing. It does mention Boeing. Uh, engines. There we go. Go right to it. So it's it's really easy to use grep from there. Um, <clears throat> there is uh, easy access to the man pages. Uh, nicely formatted for you. Uh, info pages as well. Um, there's a nice uh, eLisp tutorial in here if you want to go through that. And uh, if I still got a second, uh, Tramp mode is really cool. Um, so I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Over the Wire, uh, if you want to uh, start out learning how to be a hacker. Um, you can go browse files on a remote server. Um, TRAMP stands for, I think, Transparent Remote Access something something. Uh, so if we log into the first uh, uh, over the wire challenge to try to get the password for the next level, I could have just copied this instead of typing it all out. It should ask me for this password now. I think my internet connection is just really slow. I think I'm on the MIT guest right now. Uh, but you can browse, uh, we'll just cancel it. You can browse files the same as you would if it was on your local machine. Um, just go straight to whatever directory, open whatever file uh, with Tramp. Uh, oops, anything else? I guess uh, if, if you guys have any questions or suggestions, we can try out another uh, programming language, install that. Uh, you, can, you can sort of test me. Uh, do we want to line up or do the mic or whatever? Or I guess you can just yell it at me. I don't, I don't care either way. And I played around with it a couple of weeks ago. I also played around with one of its competitors. I think it's called Prelude. Yeah, I've seen Prelude. Prelude. There's also like Doom Emacs. I would accept Basemax, Basemax, which I'm somewhat familiar with. 
and changes it into something unrecognizable. Yeah. And as somebody also who avoids VI and VIM uh, key bindings, even their so-called holy mode. Well, I think I think holy mode has it has no sort of VIM bindings at all. It's all it's all Emacs well, original uh, bindings. Even that felt different enough that yeah. it was. I mean, I'm I'm. Yeah, I think the I, I, I'm used it to still Emacs uses like the space key. Bindings. key. I'm not used to VI key bindings, and I'd rather avoid them like the plane, frankly. Yeah. Uh, originally, for like two years, I was using uh, just regular Emacs and sort of customizing it on my so, own. So, it's found that really so liked, different. Liked it feels like a different program, and in some ways, that backfires for somebody who's somewhat familiar with plain old Emacs. Yeah. Even Prelude makes it; it's still recognizable, but it's still it gets a lot heavier and it gets a lot slower. Yeah. But, well, I, so I did actually try out Space Max once and gave up on it and came back to it like a few months later. Um, and decided that I liked it a lot more than when I first saw it. I, I was just so used to my how I originally used Emacs. Um, yeah. I really like the key chord package in the in this vanilla Emacs. If you've seen that one, that's really useful. Uh, but I find I don't really need it with the space key combinations in, in Space Max. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Hello. Uh, I know you covered Git integration a little bit. Uh, can you please show how you would? Uh, uh, like, commit a file and uh, push yeah. that commit. Uh, so here I've got my my change here. I can just hit tab. So this is the git status buffer, space uh -huh. gs for git status. Um, so unstage change dot uh, whatever little changes I just made. Um, I would hit s for stage, uh, and you see it changes to stage. Cc for commit. Uh, hi, and type. Uh, control CC, so I've committed that. Uh, it says unmerged into master is the high commit. Um, and so to push, I would hit uh, capital P, and it's asking me, I think I want to do U for origin master. Uh -huh. uh, and there we go. We just pushed, and there's all my recent commits. Stuff, 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 high. Not very good commit messages. Um, also, really nice is the log, uh, so hit, there's also my history. Uh, you can see I had a little merge where I worked on two different computers. Um, in the, uh, so you can also see all the help here in the question mark. Um, let's see, rebasing is R. Uh, I don't know. I don't ever rebase anything, hardly. Uh, so yeah. Thank you. No problem. Oh, and also, uh, by the way, if you want to hit uh, dollar sign, there's the actual what happens under the hood, so it's not entirely magic. Yeah, so you can still see what's going on. One reason I'm a little slow to adopt things like Emacs is uh, that I'm a little squeamish about running random things from the internet. And, yeah. you know, just you you have the Space Max thing that you just kind of pull from a Git repo or, or Melpa. I don't know how well these things are vetted. I see that you have Emacs as your username. I, I take it you uh, you keep it all cordoned off in one user. Is that for security um, purposes? No, uh, it's not my username. Um, this Chase there, but uh, yeah, I think it just says. That oh, that's just the name makes... of the program that's run. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Um, what do you have to say about how well these things are vetted? How well are what? How, how well these plugins are vetted in things? Um, I generally have just trusted them. Um, <laughs> You, you could go in and see the source code, I think, for pretty much everything. I think it's all free software. Um, so I don't know if they've been vetted by, I mean, the, I think there are a lot of users of Space Max uh, and it's still growing, so I imagine there's more and more people looking at it. Okay, um, hey, thanks. I, I'll get back in line because I have a second question, but I want to let someone else. Uh, okay. I'm the ambassador of IRC today. Uh, I have a couple questions uh, from the internet. Uh, Mark No says, uh, asks if you could share your org file. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Um, it's actually in my Git repo um, on GitLab. Um, it's just W Chase Kelly. W Chase Kelly? Okay. Yeah, K L E Y. Um, so you should be able to find it there. It's just called Emacs IDE. Cool. And. I don't uh, think there's there's a derp derp s uh, is TLS in Emacs still dangerous? 
Do you know of any plan to fix that? Um, I have no idea. All right. And uh, the CLI guy says, uh, what, if any, Emacs integration do you have with your email client? Um, none for me, um, but I know it, it definitely does support uh, using it with your email. Thank you very much. Yeah. I don't know if there's an email layer. Anyway. So if there's no, no one else, I, the other question I had was, uh, it, it seemed like you said there's kind of a, a, a rabbit hole of a learning curve there. Yeah. Um, it seems like the, the information about it seems a little bit scattered. Things that I look up don't seem to work necessarily with my setup. It, do, you, do you recommend just kind of sticking with that path or should I read front to back some kind of manual or what do you recommend? Um, I definitely recommend um, I think I recommend using Space Max. Um, I think the documentation is really great for it. Um, I did sort of, myself, I started with Emacs uh, and was, was pretty much familiar with most of it and different things to do with it uh, before I switched to Space Max. Um, so I guess take that with a grain of salt. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think just using Space Max, uh, there's a ton of built-in help and there's a ton of, of well-written documentation. Um, and you should be able to start with just, just what I've shown you. Um, just remember the space uh, H um, pulls up all the different help options. Um, and the Helm buffers can pull up all the named commands so you can sort of search through what you want. Um, if you know you're gonna be programming a language, uh, you can read the documentation for the layer. Um, yeah. And, and does, does it still get, if you want to install something, does it, do you still use it with Melpa? Uh, yeah, it'll use Melpa, but under the hood. Um, so to install a layer, you would put it here in the in the configuration layers uh, list. Um, and to install an individual package that's not included in another layer already, um, <coughs> you would go to the additional uh, packages. So here, uh, that's not actually the default Space Max theme. I'm using the Doom theme uh, from Doom Max, uh, which is sort of similar to Space Max, uh, but with less less in it, I guess. Um, and a little, uh, for the other guy that asked the question, a little less foreign uh, to, I think, the original Emacs users, uh, but I think targeted towards Vim users. That's a, that's a Doom Emacs. Uh, so but yeah, so I have two, two different packages installed there. So these are, this is kind of a declarative syntax for, for the, rather than, uh, it, or, rather than installing something, installing something else, you just have it declaring what you want and it does things in the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's basically the only two things I ever change in the, uh, in the, the dot space max file is add packages there or add layers uh, up above. Um, and occasionally I do have some user config uh, Lisp code down here. So there, there's all I have for my actual config on top of what Space Max already does for you. Cool, I like that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, someone asked about email clients written in Emacs. There are several that are built into uh, any distribution of it. There's VM, there's GNUS, and there's something called MH-E. And just quick on uh, Emacs itself is very uh, self-documenting. You can do, you know, control H I to get to, you know, the uh, dot info hypertext files. And you can have, there's a bunch of others uh, on control H for describing variables, keystrokes, and uh, lots of other things. That's all. Yeah, so I guess this is this is uh, GNU's GNUS. I'm not quite sure how to use it though. So, uh, yeah. So, I guess that's it. Thank you.